Well, let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, the engineering lifestyle, uh, engineering uh, uh, habits, uh, how, how can we survive in this world that changes all the time. Uh, as an engineer, there are some basics that uh, you need to master. Uh, one of them is algorithms. Uh, I, I know that most of those algorithms, data structure we learn during university, and it seems that we don't apply them so much, which might be true at some scale, but uh, this is where you can uh, also learn easily other technologies and uh, how can we understand one day if you have a very, very huge technical challenge. Uh, those are some basics that you as a software engineer needs, needs to know. And to be honest, it's part of a lot of hiring processes uh, in Europe and all around the world. At some level, uh, some companies, of course, uh, they are stronger in algorithms than others uh, because probably their business model requires uh, that uh, uh, you need some more strong algorithms. Some others, they just like they put a lower level algorithms uh, tests uh, just to make sure that uh, you are there to learn. Apart from that, uh, the, the basics which are algorithms and uh, data structures, uh, I believe that uh, you need to focus on some technologies uh, and some uh, architecture patterns. Uh, so basically you need to know some uh, some Uncle Bob, some authors and some uh, references uh, uh, on the topic so Martin Fowler, Uncle Bob, uh, they are uh, software engineers that uh, are very strong in the community. Uh, they basically define patterns and how you create clean code and clean architecture. And uh, this is also uh, need to be something that uh, you need uh, to always uh, be, uh, have a, a very good uh, basis uh, on top of that. Uh, design patterns, solid principles uh, are, uh, hot topics that uh, all software engineers they, they should know. Uh, apart from that, uh, I also believe that we always have uh, that situation uh, about any specific language, if I should learn one framework or not. Uh, I believe that, uh, yes, you should be like no frameworks, but uh, you need to understand what you have behind those frameworks how they get there, what problem they solve. Uh, for me, at least, when I started developing uh, in 2001, 2002, at that time, we mixed up CSS, HTML, uh, SQL queries on the same file. So we, don't, we didn't have so many references uh, for that. So after some time, uh, the MVC pattern arrived and uh, I decided to create my own framework uh, on top of that. To create my own framework, uh, it was very nice, made me a little bit stronger uh, and understand what are the problems they solve. Uh, but after that, Zen framework and other frameworks, they arrived and it was very interesting because I said I cannot compete with them, but I learned what I need to learn when I started building them. So I learned design, uh, software design. This is very, very important, how you design your software. Uh, and the framework allows you to, to separate the concerns between different classes and objects. So take a look at object-oriented programming and now we have also functional programming in some languages. Uh, it is, uh, uh, both of them have different patterns and you as an, an engineer, there is one thing that you need to know, there is no silver bullet, there is no technology that you want to solve all the problems. That's why it's very, very important for you uh, to, to know some theory, to understand what happens behind that. Don't be a destrated in a framework. This is exactly why I believe some, uh, some people fail in some uh, hiring processes, because sometimes they, they are so, so focused on one specific framework. So if they go to a company which has a Spring Boot, for example, for Java, or Zen framework or Symfony, they cannot go easily for another framework. And sometimes you just, because of that, you are just being administrated in the framework. Yes, it's very good to know the framework, to be very expert on them, but don't forget 
uh, to be also expert on what problem they solve. Uh, this is usually why people fail in some tests, uh, in my opinion. Uh, also, the, the hiring process, uh, it's very interesting to talk about that. Uh, here in Germany, you have a lot of different startups. You have startups who, which are in the beginning of their career and their uh, 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 moment, uh, and you have uh, startups which are like with funding and they are in a growth moment. This is uh, usually uh, very different uh, how they hire. And also, uh, it's also very, very important that you as an engineer, you need to understand which kind of environment you want to be. Usually startups which uh, they are in the beginning of their career, they are more keen to have risks on the hiring process. So basically they facilitate a little bit the hiring processes. So you basically do some algorithms and some cultural questions just to align and just to know uh, which are the things you already did. So at that time they are not so focused on quality of the work. They are more focused on getting things done because uh, this is uh, why the difference why they will survive or not. And those companies, I already worked in some of them. And of course, uh, my code, my, the design of my code was not that great uh, at that time. But this is exactly where you learn things, right? So you cannot learn and start uh, doing good uh, things uh, uh, when you start learning. Like So when I was in startups back to Brazil on, on those kind of things, uh, uh, I start like my coding uh, uh, style uh, being not so much uh, uh, well designed. So that's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, after the, the the company grows, uh, you grow together with the company. So this is where you you start learning new things, and this is exactly the opportunity you have uh, to go to that company and uh, to learn more in a high scale moment or. If you feel like more confident, you go to another company which is uh, a little bit higher, a little bit uh, bigger, uh, and there the process is a bit different. So usually those companies they are uh, they don't want to take risks in the hiring uh, process. So they have very strong technical challenges. So usually uh, they don't like people usually who are focused on one framework only. Sometimes they require that, uh, but during the hiring process, they don't focus only on the framework. Uh, usually, even if your company, you have like a framework well-defined, uh, they are not o only open for those kind of talents, because talents today, it's uh, the most important thing is how fast you learn something, what you can bring to the company. And also those companies, they also focus on soft skills. So companies that are in a growth moment, usually they also acquire soft skills from you. How, how usually you deal with your peers, how do you like share your learnings, how do you like mentor people, how do you also are able to be mentored by someone uh, and learn from them. So usually soft skills uh, are very important. Mainly here in, in companies like that, where you have too many people, uh, and it's growing all the time, you need to have communication skills. You need to know uh, how to give feedback, how to be assertive when you, you, when you ask questions. So this is uh, also a uh, very good uh, skill set that you, you need to be aware of. And there are a lot of literatures on that. Uh, there is a 16 personalities website uh, where you can find what is your personality, what are the points you need to to understand more. Uh, I think also Medium uh, is a very, very good platform. So it's topics like leadership, uh, you have the, the topic of leadership in business in startups. Those topics are amazing. And I also recommend those topics from leadership, uh, uh, also for engineers, uh, because it's there how you grow. Uh, also Medium for startups, also the technology topics there, are also very important, mainly for the architecture and design ones that I mentioned previously. Uh, some hot topics like, uh, uh, apart from the MVC architecture, which is somehow uh, uh, was a, an architecture that it was used for crude or for systems. Uh, now we have hexagonal architecture, domain-driven design, 
uh, which are architectures, uh, who, who, which are trends uh, nowadays. So there are a lot of YouTube channels. Uh, I will put the link uh, below where you can learn about microservices, domain-driven design, how you can like grow the structure of the company today to allow autonomous teams, uh, how they can work together with product managers. And this is exactly a good thing to learn about.